Hello and welcome once again everyone, John V here from PhoneArena.com. You're watching our in-depth video comparison between the HP Touchpad and the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, two of the more widely recognized tablets on the market right now. On one side you have the HP Touchpad which recently launched with its WebOS 3.0 experience and on the other hand you have the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, still relatively new in the market and it's probably one of the better honeycomb tablets as well. So we'll pit these two against one another, compare and contrast and see which one's going to be the more ideal tablet for you. There's no arguing about it. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 exhibits the better looking design of the two, even though they use the same plastic uh, exterior here. With the HP touchpad though, it just attracts a lot more fingerprints and debris really quick, which does dirty it up, where the uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 looks fairly clean with its white blast white plastic cover here um, and for the most part it resists a lot of debris. Also the size difference is significant. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab is a lot more streamlined, thinner looking tablet whereas the larger looking one with the HP touchpad. Also lighter too, it's just easier to hold for a long period of time. You don't really get fatigue from holding it. Where with the uh, HP touchpad it does pack a lot of weight. You definitely notice it in your hands. Um, the, the two might look the same in terms of design with their black bezels and of course they're both solidly built but in the end we'd rather pick the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 just because it has a little bit more intriguing looking design. Just by looking at it too, you can tell that the Galaxy Tab 10.1 has a widescreen appearance with its display versus the Boxer with the HP Touchpad with its 4 to 3 aspect ratio. You get a larger display, 10.1 inches with the Galaxy Tab, also a resolution 1280 by 800 pixels, so a pretty good amount of uh, pixel density there. With the HP Touchpad, it's a 9.7 inch IPS display and 1024 by 768 uh, resolution and honestly uh, you're going to still see some really nice looking detail with both pretty sharp uh, good clarity too so you're not going to have any issues as far as making out even fine text they also exhibit a good amount of colors too uh, with the galaxy tab 10.1 though it just seems to be a little bit more on the saturated side whereas the uh, hp touch has a little bit more neutral tones with its looks they both have really nice viewing angles so you can see pretty much in any any angle but the only difference is of course the brightness output the galaxy tab 10.1 just has a higher brightness output uh, so you can view it in outdoor conditions whereas the HP touchpad just looks a little bit on the dim side. Both tablets feature front-facing cameras. On the HP Touchpad is a 1.3 megapixel one, and on the Galaxy Tab 10.1 it's a higher 2 megapixel one. With HP Touchpad you can only use it for video chat through Skype, where with the Galaxy Tab 10.1 you can shoot photos and videos as well. There's no kidding we prefer the micro USB port on the, on the HP Touchpad just because it's a little bit more traditional versus the proprietary one in use with the Galaxy Tab 10.1. The volume controls are very easy to make out and they exhibit a really good responsive feel when you press them both and they're evenly sized as well. Even though the dedicated power buttons of both tablets are kind of flat to our taste, they still produce a good amount of tactile feel when you press them down. Furthermore, both tablets offer stereo support uh, with their left and right speakers. With the Galaxy Tab 10.1, when you hold it in landscape, it's on its left and right sides, whereas on the, Gal on the HP Touchpad, it's on the bottom edge. And finally in the rear, you can tell with the Galaxy Tab 10.1 you have a 3 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. You can take photos and videos with it. Unfortunately, that's not something offered with the HP Touchpad, so you lose out with that functionality. But you do gain the ability to charge the tablet uh, wirelessly with its inductive charging system. Just to give you a better indication of the kind of color production you expect with both tablets with their displays, we have our website here. Uh, just overall, the HP Touchpad produces some warmer looking color tones versus the cooler ones on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. You could especially see it with the uh, white here. Let's show you real quick. You could see right away it has a little bit more of a blue tinge with the Galaxy Tab 10.1 and there's a yellowish type of tinge with the uh, HP Touchpad. Clarity and detail is going to be the same, uh, but as we mentioned already, you just get a little bit more saturated colors with the, the Galaxy Tab 10.1. Both tablets are completely modernized with their dual-core processors to give us a pretty good uh, responsive feel with the platform experience. On the HP Touchpad, it's a 1.2 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. And the Galaxy Tab 10.1, it's a NVIDIA Tegra 2 chipset one, clocked in at 1 GHz. And you can tell just navigating in portrait here, uh, it's pretty good responsive feel, but there's still a little bit of a jerkiness going on with their operations. But with the Galaxy Tab 10.1, it's definitely evident in portrait, but when you put into land, landscape 
uh, landscape mode here, it's a lot more fluid looking. And with the HP touchpad, it can be unpredictable at times just because uh, when it's cooperating, it does exhibit some really nice uh, responsive feels, a good kinetic scrolling and all that. But at other times, you could sense a little bit of lagness or stutter with its operation. But nonetheless, the actual uh, fluidity and performance of the platform is pretty good with both uh, tablets. There's no arguing about it, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 with its Android 3.1 Honeycomb experience offers a ton more personalization than what's found with WebOS 3.0 on the HP touchpad. You can of course see that we have a lot of different widgets with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Some are more useful than the others, but some of them are also resizable, so it gives you a little bit more functionality in that aspect. So you don't have to run dedicated apps to get pertinent information, such as like, you know, your calendar, the your weather and all that, where with the HP touchpad, you have, to see, you have to actually launch separate applications to that. And the only thing I limit to in terms of personalization is just the, uh, the background wallpaper and also the uh, placement of the icons in the main menu. However, the HP Touchpad does a lot better job in terms of uh, implementing multitasking. It's just a little bit more engaging than what's seen on the Galaxy Tab 10.1. We like the cards view so you could have a full view of all the open applications and you can move about each one very swiftly as you could tell. On top of that, you have organization stuff such as uh, stacks features so you could better uh, you know, place your applications together. On the Samsung Galaxy Tab, it's a little bit more static with its approach. You have the task menu here. You can quickly launch at any time. It overlays it on top of whatever you're looking at, but it's just basically a preview pane of what's open. You can quickly jump between programs. But as far as closing them out with the HP touchpad, it's a quick quick swipe like that and closes out, closes out automatically. Where on the on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, you got to go in settings and the applications and just go through a bunch of menus to close out specific ones. When it comes to notifications, both do a pretty good job in that aspect. Uh, with the HP Touchpad, it positions all the uh, notifications in the top right corner in the status bar so you get a good view of whatever it is. And on the Android 3.1 Honeycomb experience, it's all found towards the bottom here in the, st in the system bar towards where the clock is. Uh, they'll aggregate accordingly and overall they're both more than functional. When it comes to inputting text, we just find the uh, well-rounded features on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 to be a little bit more preferred than what's offered on the HP Touchpad. But though we do like the row of dedicated numbers on the touchpad just because it's very quick and useful, it's missing on the Galaxy Tab 10.1 and you gotta press the secondary functions to uh, input those. As far as responsiveness, they're both really nice, but at times the HP Touchpad can slow down or even pause altogether. And it's pretty a smooth and stable experience on the Galaxy Tab 10.1. On top of that, you have different keyboards available to you so you could use the uh, standard uh, Android one and the biggest functionality with the Samsung Galaxy Tab is the ability to input text via your voice. When it comes to viewing emails, you're not going to have any problem with either tablets just because they're more than uh, more than optimized for a tablet medium here. The thing we like about the HP Touchpad is at first it has a three panel view but you can rearrange it to either a two panel or a single panel layout whichever is most important to you and we just like that organizational aspect of it. it kind of has the same premise with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Uh, you have a two panel system so when you make a selection of an email it's going to shift everything over to left and you gain visibility of the content here. But the thing the difference between the two is that just overall Gmail has a lot more deeper features that we prefer. Fortunately, we're treated to a great web browsing experience on both tablets just because they have that desktop-like experience with their support of Flash. Um, as far as just response rate and also navigation, it's pretty much going to be uh, relatively close with one another. You can tell with kinetic scrolling, it's uh, pretty responsive. Same thing applies to the uh, to the uh, pinch gestures here, zooming in, zooming out. And overall, they're both going to be on the same level. Honeycomb's music player is by far the more appealing looking between the two just because you have this nice 3D carousel effect when you're browsing through songs, uh, whereas the HP touchpad relies on, on a more conventional approach with its layout. Uh, you just have the listing here. You have access to things like the uh, on-screen controls as well with both tablets. As far as the uh, audio quality of speakers, uh, they're both pretty good. They both have uh, left and right channels, obviously. Pretty loud too, but the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 just sounds a little bit more strained uh, with its highest uh, setting. We have the gallery apps loaded on both tablets, and the thing we like about the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 is the fact that it has this nice 3D effect to its uh, with its layout, so it gives you that stacks view as you're tilting the tablet. With the HP Touchpad, though, it can be jerky at times when you're actually trying to browse through photos. 
On top of that, as far as just features though, uh, there isn't that many available with these HP touchpad because the only thing that you're limited to is of course uh, being shared via email. There's no editing functions whatsoever. While the Galaxy Tab 10.1 has the usual set of sharing functionality and also some minor editing options as well. So here we have the same video uh, encoded in MPEG-4, 1920 by 1080 resolution, so 1080p video, but the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 is able to play with no hiccups whatsoever. It has a good frame rate, lots of detail. With the HP touchpad, it does look nice, but the audio quality, audio is not in sync with the video, and it seems to be strained when playing 1080p videos in general. With the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1's higher brightness output, it just makes it a little bit more appealing to watch videos, especially if you're going to be watching in outdoor conditions. Hands down, the Google Maps experience on the uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 is far superior to the uh, Big Maps one on the uh, HP Touchpad. It's just a little bit more limited with the HP Touchpad and its features, whereas the Galaxy Tab 10.1 has just a ton of stuff, such as uh, voice guided turn by turn directions, 3D maps view, and of course, uh, street view. So, all in all, we definitely like the offering with Google Maps. Equally at the same time, we actually like the YouTube application on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 just because it's very useful and has a lot of different features such as the ability to share stuff, like things, and even comment. Very fitting for a tablet application. But with the HP Touchpad though, there is a YouTube icon in the uh, app panel, but it just essentially launches the website. Nothing really fancy about it. Even though it does offer flash support, it would just been nice to see, uh, you know, just a dedicated client on the HP Touchpad. When it comes to third-party apps, we're really impressed with the amount of offerings available to the HP Touchpad and WebOS 3.0 experience. In fact, they're not gimmicky ones, they're very quality uh, applications to tell you the truth. Uh, on the other hand, you have the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 with its uh, honeycomb experience. Right now, as we look at the Android market, it only has 110 uh, apps that are, ta that are optimized for tablet usage, and we'd think that it would be a little bit higher. And when you compare the two, it just seems like the Touchpad has uh, slightly better ones from what we experienced so far. There's no arguing about it. Battery life with both tablets are impressively really good. Um, in fact, uh, we managed to get a solid one day's worth out of normal usage on both tablets, which is good enough for pretty much anyone out there. So whether you're a light user, heavy user, or someone in between, you'll sleep soundly knowing that it's going to be equipped and handling your needs. So here we are once again with two fantastic tablets, both priced evenly at $500 for their base models. With HP Touchpad, we love its uh, implementation of multitasking. It definitely does that a great job in that aspect. And it's one of the few platforms that, that executes it very well. On top of that, we see a lot of uh, decent uh, third-party applications from the onset with the platform, so it's nice to see that developers are on board with it. On the other side, the uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, it actually wins our heart with its uh, impressive design. Design. Just because for $500, it makes it feel like as though it is every bit of that money. On top of that, you have uh, an engaging, personalized uh, Android Honeycomb experience, a lot of personalization as we've seen already, and you have the functionality of taking photos and videos, which is something that's not offered by the HP Touchpad, which lessens its capacity overall. So in the end, uh, we'd definitely say the $500 you'd spend, you'd probably better off going with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 with its uh, deeper set of features and functionality. So if you'd like to learn more about either tablets, you could check out our website, phonerena.com. Thanks for watching, guys.